In this video, we take a look at the structured approach to program design. There are many skills, techniques and methods that can be used when designing a solution to a problem. It's important to take a structured, logical approach. This is often achieved by a process known as problem decomposition. Problem decomposition is nothing more than the process of taking a large problem and breaking it down into several smaller problems. The outcome of problem decomposition is often a hierarchy or structure chart, and you need to know how to construct these. Depending on the size and complexity of the overall problem, these smaller problems can often be broken down further. You can repeat the process, fully exploring the problem, until each of the lowest level boxes represents a single task or function, which can then be coded as a procedure, module, function or method. It should be noted that not all problems lend themselves to being easily broken down using a top-down hierarchical approach as we just saw. Typically, event-driven programs, such as those based around graphical user interfaces, can be hard to break down this way. Even then, we can usually start separating out the main areas of functionality to break the problem into a series of smaller ones that are more manageable. A good way of tackling problem decomposition is using an approach called stepwise refinement to produce a top-down modular design via a hierarchy chart. The aim of problem decomposition is to end up with small, independent modules which can then be written by a single person or small team. These modules can be written and tested in isolation before being integrated back into the main solution. Here's an example of a top-down modular design that has been created using stepwise refinement for a typical arcade shooter. Notice how the number of boxes increases the further down the diagram we go. This illustrates the problem being broken down into increasingly smaller parts. The yellow box at the top is the name of the overall program. The green boxes underneath the title are the key interface screens the user will see. Below these are the main game objects in blue, followed by the actions those objects can take coloured in orange. There is no right answer to producing diagrams like this. It all depends on how you visualise the problem. There are many advantages to using this structured approach. It makes the program easy to read and understand, as each functional module has a clear purpose. It reduces the chances of error and bugs, as each functional module can be tested independently. It facilitates the maintenance and modification of the program, as changes can be made in one functional module without affecting the others. It enhances the productivity and efficiency of the development team, as different functions or modules can be assigned to different programmers and integrated later. And it improves the portability and reusability of the program, as functions or modules can be easily adapted or reused for different purposes or platforms. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What are hierarchy charts and why are they useful? And what are the advantages of using a structured approach to program design? 